Okay guys, today on what to do, we have a uh, hydraulic pump that's taken out of a Toro Sampro. And this is, let me show you the Sampro first. It's the Sampro 5000, all right? And the problem we had with that was, it was doing okay on flat, uh, flat ground, but when you would try to go up a hill or get out of a bunker, it just would not go, it had no power. Now, uh, they had just purchased this machine from another establishment and that establishment told them that it did need a hydraulic motor So that is the reason why we took it out and we're gonna dig inside and find out what's going on And hopefully it is the hydraulic motor and this tutorial is basically just to show you what you're gonna come across If it's your first time opening one of these up so you can see what's inside I'm not really gonna get into the details on how the hydraulic pump works and what each part does I will do a separate video on that but this is just gonna be a quick breakdown, piece by piece, taking it apart, show you uh, what's inside and what to look for. Okay, now, with any pump, before you start moving all these layers, these all have to go back on the same way. And if you were to put this piece back on that way, even though it looks like it fits, it's not going to work properly. These all are engineered to be fitted a certain way and what you need to do is label each piece. Now you can see I took a Dremel and I just kind of scraped it there. I have one line. And on this piece here, the center piece, I did another line. And on the bottom, I did another. Now just to be safe, I went to this side. And you can see I did two lines. And then another two lines where we at right there and another two lines so no matter what happens when i take this apart and they all get placed here it will always go back right by just labeling the block all right and take lots of pictures of where your fittings are which direction they're facing you could get this back up there and this fitting is now facing this way and you can't get the hose on it and now you're in a position where maybe you can't even turn the fitting. So you wanna to try to keep in mind where everything is placed um, so that it goes back on the machine that way and your hose will line right up with it. All right, so the first thing you're probably gonna do is, this is called your charge pump on top of here. All right, you're gonna to wanna to take these four bolts off to remove the charge pump. Now, after you take these four bolts off, you're going to have a keyway, which you want to get a screwdriver, and you want to pry that out. Oh, I actually was able to pull that by hand there. All right, we got our keyway out, we got our four bolts out. And being that we took the bolts out first, you want to set them down in order, because that's the way you're going to put it back together. We did the four bolts first, then we did the keyway. Now we're going to slide this up. Now with any pump that you're unsure of, you want to be careful. Some of these do have little balls and springs that will pop out. So you want to pull this up extremely slow. And definitely always take pictures or video as you're doing things so you can put it back together. Um, and there's also going to, there's going to be a gasket under here too, which there's our gasket. All right, and that is your charge pump. And what you wanna look for here is any big digs, scoring, anything like that. Um, this one has some normal wear and tear on it, but nothing to be uh, freaking out over. So that's gonna go here, next in line. There's our gasket, which uh, that looks to be okay, and that actually seats right around in there. And we'll seat that when we're done. And then you have your, uh, your rotating gears here, which this is what spins and will develop your high and low pressure here. It kind of rotates like that. Um, this you can kind of just pull up. All right, that actually goes inside of there. And this should have a pin, and it does, going through each side. So you want to slide that right off of that pin. You can set that right there. And there's your pin there. 
I want to just pull that pin out so you don't lose it. Set that pin with that. And all of that goes back on in that order. All right, now we're up here to the actual head and you can see some abnormal scarring there. I don't know why that would be going that way, um, but it's not, it's not really dug in, but something was definitely rubbing there. It's a really weird angle considering that the gears are spinning there why this is coming like this, I don't know. But, it's smooth. So that's nothing too crazy there. Alright, we're going to uh, flip this over. Okay, so these four bolts are going to be removed. And uh, if you have a keyway up here, which when I took the fan off, I put the keyway with the fan. But if it's still up here, you want to remove that keyway. Uh, you can take off these four bolts and when we take these off we're going to start a second row okay this is our charge plate on the top of it and this is going to be our bottom row here so we make sure we put everything back in order so let's go ahead and we're going to uh start loosening these already for the video Underneath of this is going to be a gasket, so lift up carefully. All right, we got them off. So under here again, be careful lifting this up. If the gasket is still good, you might be able to keep it. And also your uh, your cylinder block is going to be under here with your cylinders. Man, this sucker's heavy. Hold on, let me set this down. carefully all right there's the gasket and that actually looks pretty good but let me show you what it looks like up under here all right so this is what it looks like under here all right now remember how you took these off you see this little uh pin right here is actually going to go back in here all right so when you put that back on you want to make sure that that drops down in there all right this is your valve plate here which you want to make sure there's no digs in this and uh, these little kidney bean slots here make sure there's no burrs make sure that's all nice and smooth Looks like there's a little bit of wear on it. Again, nothing really alarming. Just, you can see right here it's been wearing a little bit on here, but it's not, it doesn't feel dug in or anything, so I'm going to assume that that's just normal wear. Alright, but get that groove, put it on that right there. Alright, you'll feel it drop in, and uh, that's going to go next in line in your gasket. Alright, oh, also I wanted to point out, you're going to have these balls here with springs. You want to make sure that they're not seized up in there. Alright, these little valves, and they, they feel good. And they got little O-rings on there, which they appear to be okay. And I uh, don't really see anything on here either. It all looks pretty good. All right, now you're down in your caliber here, caliber block. And when you pull this out, that's where all your little cylinders are going to try to drop out. So what you might want to do is put this on the side like that. And then you want to slowly pull that out now there's going to be a little retaining clip with that you can see them coming out there all right set that down 
All right, these are the shoes here, which you can see some wear on that by where it's shiny and gold and, and not. And these, if you pull up on this retaining clip here, you can see they will all slide out. All right, but before you do that, you want to make sure that none of these are seized up. So the way the swash plate works, and we'll get to that next, kind of as this is, this spins around, and the swash plate is going to do that, and it's going to draw suction and push. This is what's building up your pressure here. And you just want to make sure that everything here is flowing as it should. Nothing is giving any friction or seized up. Check all your shoes here. And you can see what one looks like. Pull it out. They just come right out. So don't panic if they all fall out. You can seat them right back in there. Alright. If you want to take them out one by one and examine them, you can. This is like loading an old Magnum revolver. Alright. You can pull all them out and check them. But this appears to be operating okay and check the uh, cylinder itself too it actually doesn't look bad either again normal wear and tear in there you can see but nothing that is damaged or dug in that's just dirt and grease and, and there's grooves there All right, well, that's gonna go next in line there. And now, you're down here to your cradle, your swash plate down here. And there's bearings under there too, so you can get a little hook like this. Kind of pull up on that. That's gonna go next in line, excuse me. And you can kind of see if we can see down in there. You can see there's bearings down underneath it there. And they all appear to be there. So I'm not really going to remove the swash plate because that all seems to be okay. Um, now, this on the side, let me zoom back out. As this goes up and down, when you engage it, you will see that swash plate move. Alright, so you can pull up, and then you can, I can't really do it with one hand, but you also push down on it, and it will rock this back and forth. And when that rocks, that's what causes this to rock. Alright, but that all feels like it's, it's operating okay. Um, if I did want to remove that, you're going to have to come over here, and there's a little U-clip here. You're going to have to tap out, and uh, pins, you'd have to remove to pull that swash plate up, and then you'll be able to get to the bearings, but I don't need to go through that, because I can see the bearings in there are okay, and this appears to be operating okay. Um, but if you do see bearings missing in there, you are going to want to go ahead and remove that. That would be the last step of the pump. Um, and also ex examine the shaft here, which you can see it does have some some wear, but again, that's polished. It's not it's not dug in or anything. So I don't know why they said this pump was bad. I'm gonna assume that maybe. The mechanic there just wanted a new machine and said the pump was bad. We might actually be taking the wheel motors off of this machine now because I do not think it's the pump. But that's really it. Um, and you want to put everything back in this order as you took it off. Um, but those are the things you're going to look for. And I haven't seen anything that tells me that this pump is bad. But that's basically it. That's what the insides of those pumps are gonna look like. It's actually really simple. A lot of people get intimidated by it, but you just gotta be careful. Um, every pump is different. 
And when you're taking a piece off, I recommend uh, having a video on or something just in case you need to play that video back and see where a piece fell out of or whatever if you're not familiar with pumps. Um, but yeah, uh, we, I don't think it's the hydraulic pump. I think at this point now we're going to move on to the wheel motor so i'm going to have to do another updated video to let you know exactly what the problem was and uh that's it so hopefully this video helps somebody out there who's taking apart one of these pumps and kind of gives you a better understanding of what's inside and just make sure you take a lot of pictures lay everything down in order and don't lose any pieces because uh, you lose one little spring or one little ball that falls out um, it's never going to run right again and then you're just you're not going to know why. All right, guys, hit subscribe below. Give me a like. I do these videos daily, and I'll see you next time.